Well, episode 10, we're in double figures, and, uh, well, it's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Making the videos, by the way, not managing this football team. But I won't get ahead of myself, because we did get to episode 10 on the Norwich series. I was never seen again, and I can 90% guarantee that is not going to happen again. In the last episode, we took on Stoke City away from home in a game that I dubbed as a six-pointer and lost by two goals to nil, which, for the first time, has actually put us in real danger of getting relegated. Like, it's only March, and I'm actually fearful for once that we might actually go down. Well, I mean, I would be if I didn't have a certain striker in my team. Now, following that Stoke City defeat, we took on two teams who have scored six against us this season. And in the home game against Preston, Declan Rudd made a mistake, which Alex Samuel thankfully pounced on to give us the lead in the first half. And after holding out for 93 minutes, we then conceded in the last minute of injury time as Preston got a 1-1 draw. Uh, we then followed that up with Barnsley at home. And Alex Samuel once again gave us the lead in the first half with this poacher's effort. But within two minutes of the restart, we found ourselves 2-1 down as Patrick Schmidt headed in. And then Connor Chaplin fired into the bottom corner to give Barnsley a 2-1 lead. Curtis Thompson then equalised from a free kick on the 68th minute to get us back on level terms. And then Daryl Horgan was played in by David Wheeler in the 94th minute. And he secured all three points with this great finish into the bottom corner. Finally, we took on rock bottom Coventry away from home. And Dan Lundaloo scored twice uh, with one being a long range strike and the other one being a tap in to give us all three points. And to push us further away from the relegation zone. In this episode, we take on Blackburn Rovers, a team that we have faced this season and lost 2-0 to. And a team that I can't wait to face. No reasons why, it's just, it's the game I picked, really. Now, after the Stoke City game, my assistant manager came to me with a player development advice summary, and I found out that quite a few of my players have had their abilities changed, and a few of them who were championship midfielders, like, two months ago, are now only rated as League 2 midfielders. Like, what happens? I'm going to assume it's not my training methods or my managerial methods, it's the actual players themselves. Now, the reports are coming out to the club that Curtis Thompson has fallen out with me, which is untrue, because he actually scored for me recently. And I think we all know that if a player is not in good terms with you, he's not going to score for you. So if you remember Cole Silver, you know, the bloke that wanted to leave after about five hours of being at the club. Well, I gave him his debut against Preston North End in the 1-1 draw and found out that it's his first appearance as a professional footballer in nine years. I mean, it's a momentous occasion for me. I mean, will the bloke ever play football again? Find out next week. I mean, actually, generally next week because, like, I don't upload at the weekend. The draw against Preston also saw us go five games without a win, which obviously we broke against Barnsley in the game after that. But then they said that apparently the recent memories of our poor form means that people are forgetting about the 1-0 win against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. I mean, hold your horses, lads. It was only two months ago. Ryan Tafazoli has also been called up to the Iranian side, which shows me that their manager doesn't watch any of our matches because I haven't played him recently. So Watford have confirmed the appointment of Leonardo Jardim, you know, the manager that led Monaco to the Champions League semi-finals like three years ago, and now he's managing in the same league as me. Yeah, I'm sure he's uh, looking forward to uh, testing themselves against the best managers in the business. I found out that our opponents in this episode, Blackburn, got knocked out of the FA Cup by Arsenal, which I'm hoping to exploit in the next game. Also found out Brighton got knocked out of the FA Cup as well, so, you know, good riddance. The absolute lucky bastards. Uche Piazu has finally got off the mark for Uganda as well, which means he's now scored more goals for Uganda in the last two months than he has for me. Any uh, danger of bringing some of those goals back for us, Uche? I also got a reminder of some of the contracts which are expiring in the summer. Uh, a lot of those players are pissed off this year, so I don't think they're going to be signing on for another year. So, Martin O'Neill was in the press again, and he was singing Alex Samuel's praises. Found that Alex Samuel has got 15 goals in 22 games this season, which include the FA Cup. I mean, that is a pretty insane return for a player that was not even in the team lineup three months ago. So the board gave me their monthly summary for how I'm doing at the moment and they gave me a B plus, which I was very pleased about. But in terms of the tactics, they said they were satisfied with the impact of the park the bus style I've employed in recent matches. Uh, excuse me? Park the bus? I mean, I don't park the bus at the moment. And also, if I was parking the bus, how am I conceding as many goals as I am? But now we move into our game against Blackburn Rovers at home and it's a big game for us because a win here would push us quite far away from the relegation zone with only seven games left. With that in mind, I have refreshed a few things with the side. Cole De Silva comes in at left back to make his debut on the series. Uh, he's just the only option I have to play left back because Joe Jacobson is now tired again. It means Ryan Tafazoli would then come into centre back to play alongside Josh Knight. Adoniram 
plays in the defensive midfield role again for us, but we've gone with Nick Freeman and Curtis Thompson as our centre midfielders, as Dominic Gape and Alex Patterson are fatigued as well. And our front three of Daniel Nalundalu, Alex Samuel and David Wheeler are probably our most potent front three, and I can't wait for them to not score any goals this game. Because every time we turn on the cameras, we just turn to shit. That Blackburn side is actually quite good, to be fair. I mean, they did beat us 2-0 earlier this season, and they absolutely destroyed us after we had a good initial 30 minutes. So I'm looking forward to this game. And it's a bit annoying that they have one of the best players in the EFL, in my opinion, in their team. I mean, Adam Armstrong is basically a cheat code. Look at those stats. Just look at those stats. But as I may have mentioned already this episode, a win here will actually give us a very good platform for the rest of the season in order to survive. And I could probably hear the side disappointments from you because you probably wanted me to get relegated with the side. But let's look at the bright side. There's always next season. Two minutes, one o'clock, and Blackburn had a free kick, which they played into the box. We headed it out, and then Rankin Costello played the ball into the box again, and Ryan Niambi headed it past our keeper. Two minutes on the clock, and we're 1-0 down. Fantastic. In this game, I was playing a high line because I wanted to catch Blackburn offside, and it worked wonders as Adam Armstrong was played in and then he hit the post and then a couple of minutes later it was played in again and this time Ryan Allsop made the save and then we managed to clear the ball and then about two minutes later he then ran through on goal and this time he fired it in third time lucky for him I mean brilliant like why am I playing a high line against this bloke I should have realized that after the first time they got through a goal I should have dropped the line and I have to admit I love the effort Ryan Allsop put into the save fantastic world class that boy it was pretty much all Blackburn for the first 20 minutes and Ryan Niambi was played in on goal again but he fired it wide when he should have probably scored I mean, if a right back had scored two goals against me, I would have definitely have resigned. The embarrassment on that would know no bounds. But we did fasten our first chance into the game in the 28th minute. David Wheeler played a lovely ball over the top for Nick Freeman to run through on goal and fire it into the back of the net to bring us back into the game. Probably undeservedly. Literally the first highlight I had and I scored. It's, it's fantastic football management, I have to admit. But on the stroke half time, Blackburn regained their two goal lead as Joe Rankin Costello fired it in from long range and uh, yeah, 3 1 down at half time. I mean, what a game to have picked. I'm definitely going to get thrashed, aren't I? Half time came around and it was fair to say that Blackburn probably had the upper hand in this game. Midway through the second half we started to get a grip on the game and David Wheeler once again created another chance as he played in Alex Samuel who fired it away. I feel like I should just get my stream deck out and put Alex Samuel score then just press it every time it happens because it's happening every game at the moment. With 15 minutes left on the clock I decided to make a double change and Dominic Gabe came off the bench to replace Curtis Thompson in midfield while Dara Horgan that played on the left hand side for us in place of Daniel Nalundalu. And as I came back from making the substitutions Ryan Allsop had the ball in his hands and fired a long ball over the top of the Blackburn defence. Found Alex Samuel running for on goal and what did he do he put the ball in the back of the net of course he did 17 goals in all competitions this season this man's talent has no bounds as well my greatest achievement will be getting this bloke into the welsh team because i definitely think he can make it and then within a minute of that goal daryl horgan the irish messi for us ran at the blackburn defense found himself through on goal but then fired it straight at the keeper and that was it for the game we managed to secure a 3-3 draw which means we come back from 3-1 down again this season to draw 3-3 we've done it against coventry a couple of episodes ago we've done it against blackburn in this episode which is a great comeback team god that sounded awful the way i put it <laughs>